back with you here at this amazing Ch Challenge Golf Association event. And oh my goodness, I've got Charlie Reimer with me. Yes, Charlie Reimer. It's so cool that you're here. I'm over here. I'm riding with Reimer. So cool that you're here. So what are you thinking? What do you think about Challenge Golf? Well, first and foremost, the folks at Challenge Golf, they're awesome. Um, and this VIP experience, we're here at Top Golf Chattanooga, is, is really cool, uh, very exciting. Everybody's getting a chance right now to play a little golf at Pebble Beach in the simulator here. So everybody's having a great time. But the big thing is, is raising money for a wonderful cause, their ministry. I, I love taking uh, believers, golf, putting them together. Uh, when you do that, everybody's going to have a great time. Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's wonderful outreach and fellowship. It, it really, really is. And uh, I know that you're also, like, aren't you like a spokesperson for Macklemore? Well, yeah, I'm very much involved in Macklemore. If you're not familiar with Macklemore, it's, uh, yeah, right here, absolutely, right here in the Chattanooga area. It's actually down into Georgia a little bit. Absolutely beautiful place. It's on Lookout Mountain that, uh, par parts of Lookout Mountain are in Tennessee, parts are in Georgia, parts are in Alabama. And a few years ago, First time I saw the property, I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a spiritual place. There's a little altitude there. Uh, so we're able to have bent grass greens there, which is really nice. And uh, got a new clubhouse. Our golf course is uh, really doing well. Golf Digest just named our 18th hole, the best 18th hole uh, built since year 2000. Super cool place. And as beautiful as the facility is, the folks involved with it are even better. And uh, our staff is phenomenal, um, our board, our president, everybody involved. We're talking about people of character, and uh, they're very proud to support this ministry here. And uh, yes. as a result of that, I'm very happy to be here myself. No, you said it. That's what I talk about with Cindy's Choice. We support small businesses while we serve the community. And I'm like, you know, it's not the product. It's the people behind the product that really make it. And you're right. At Macklemore, there's wonderful people behind the product. Well, it started out, and I said I was kind of riding with Reimer. <laughs> so I know that you do that out in Myrtle Beach. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I'm an ambassador for the golf in Myrtle Beach and i uh, been there the last couple of years and I love getting up to the Chattanooga area. It's my getaway place. My family's from here. I was born in Cleveland, Tennessee, just up the road. And, and uh, my youngest son works here in the area and, and I love it when I get a chance to visit. But I live full time in Myrtle Beach and represent uh, the bulk of our 90 golf courses down there. And uh, such a neat place. I actually grew up in South Carolina and spent a lot of time there when I was a kid. And uh, I've got a brand new show over on CBS Sports Network that I'm really proud of. It's got the best name in the history of names for television shows. You're dying to know what that is, yes, aren't you? Tell us. The Charlie Reimer Show. And uh, so uh, we just started this week. It airs at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on uh, CBS Sports Network. And uh, it's part of a great Monday night block of golf programming. Michael Breed has a show from 7 to 8. Sir Nick Faldo, six-time major champion, his show is 8 to 8.30 yeah, he's my warm-up act because then I come on at 8.30. So uh, it's been awesome. We've got a lot of great celebrities on the show. And and uh, coming up uh, this next week, Dustin Johnson, world number one, is my guest. So anytime you got a new show and you can get world number one, that's cool. We tape it all in Myrtle Beach. And I uh, hope folks, when they have a chance to see the show, will enjoy it. Oh, no, definitely we'll be checking that out. Again, this is just so awesome. It's so wonderful to meet you because I've been watching some riding with Reimer, and it is. And, you know, golf is just so social. And to be able to, you know, get out and just really share this way is wonderful. And we appreciate you taking your time to come and share with us this evening. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy's choice to be in charge. Cindy here, and yes, you are in charge of your own life. It's up to you to make good choices. And I made a really good choice today because I've got Charlie Reimer <laughs> in the studio with me today, and this is so exciting. And oh my goodness, Charlie. <laughs> so let me list off. All right, who's Charlie Reimer? Okay. Pro golfer, major golf personality. Aren't you like a golf analysis? How do you say that? Analysis? Sis, 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 well, you, the, you threw a curveball the, at me. Golf on, analyst. I analyst, think thank about, you. On yeah, the, yeah. On the uh, Golf Channel, you have your own show, CBS Sports Network. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, I love riding with Rhymer. Mm -hmm. That is so much fun. You're a spokesperson for some place 
I just adore, which is Macklemore. Hey, mm -hmm. tagline, tell them. I, I, I thought of that. Then you're also spokesperson for Myrtle Beach Golf. Yeah. Okay, what did I leave out? <laughs> I, I think I think you uh, I think you pretty much nailed it. Uh, I, I'm a, a I'm a dad. I've got two kids that have graduated from college and are now employed, which is a miracle in its own right. And uh, just celebrated my 30th anniversary with my uh, wife Carol, who's. Uh, uh, and, and Angel. In fact, they call her St. Carol because she's been putting up with me for 30 years. Oh. But uh, no, it's been life's been an adventure for us, and we're, and we're grateful for every day. Oh, that's amazing, and I can't wait to meet Carol. Um, I, I, just, I already feel like kind of a kinship there. <laughs> I feel like she and I have a very similar heart, and we'll talk about that more when it comes to like helping the homeless and so sure. forth. But I want to start more by digging into you a little more because I'm talking about all these amazing things that you're accomplishing and you're from right here in our area you're from cleveland tennessee mm -hmm. so let's start there and just i know uh we're, we're going to talk about our event too and i know that's very near and dear to you because it is your home and you have lots of memories there and, and i love that when you know somebody can go do good and then come back and do good mm -hmm. in their community so and i'm really excited to be a part of that so but tell us about that community you growing up there and um, especially like what led to swinging the club. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was born in Cleveland and um, I, I actually left there, I think I was maybe middle of the second grade. So I was from one of those split families and my dad's family, my mom's family, uh, my, my step family, all, all from that area. And, and so my earliest golf that I ever played, and gosh, I was about four or five years old when I started playing golf, was, was there in Cleveland. And, and they were all members of the Cleveland Country Club. And we had a home there on the, the fifth hole. And, and so, wow. I, so I have some great memories there. And uh, my, my uh, mom and dad divorced when I, when I was very young. And uh, my, my mom remarried my stepdad, um, who, who's still around and kicking, in fact, still lives there in, in Cleveland. Uh, and and uh, my, my dad, who I didn't really get to know, my biological dad, I didn't really know him that well until I was about 18 or so. But we ended up having a good relationship, mm -hmm. and everybody got along just fine. And uh, but, but when we left Cleveland, my uh, uh, stepdad's job took him to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we lived just in, inside of South Carolina. So from like second grade through high school, I, I was there in South Carolina. But summer times, all the holidays, uh, we were always back here in Cleveland. Right. And, it was and still home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I always uh, really appreciated the area and appreciated family, because why not? Every time I'd come here, it's for birthday or Christmas, I'd get presents. All the family would give me presents, so, <laughs> you know, you're going to... Just sounds yeah, like more family. Yeah, more. yeah, but, but we, that, the road from Fort Mill, South Carolina... To, to Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, we would get on uh, I-40 and go over the mountains uh. up through Asheville. And I, I remember uh, we always come, we had that old Buick Regal, you know, it was a beautiful car and I was always <laughs> in the back seat. And, and to this day, I still have motion sickness, but I threw up so much out the back of that window. They wouldn't even stop to let me throw up, you know. We'd never get where we were going. But I was it, that one, too. I'm, oh, I'm still like, yeah, uh, uh, let, it, let me in the front. <laughs> Put air but, in my face. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it was about five and a half hours, and, and uh, so we, we, we tore up that road a lot. And then uh, when, when after I graduated high school, I, I, I went to Georgia Tech, and I found that when I was in Atlanta, um, I would spend more and more time in in, uh, in the Cleveland area, and, and in fact, both my mom and stepdad ended up moving back to the to the Cleveland area. So I, I was grateful for the opportunity to grow up in South Carolina, but really close ties here in Tennessee. And and um, uh, ever since college, uh, this has just been an area that I've spent spent a lot of time in. And we've li we've lived in a lot of places. I've lived in a lot of hotel rooms, and uh -huh. and uh, th this really is sort of my anchor point for what's. Uh, been essentially um, nomadic or gypsy style life. It's been a lot of fun. You know, we've got got a chance to see a lot of places, and 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 as I mentioned there at the, at the top, you know, our life's been an adventure, and and my wife's been with me every step of the way, and 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 so it, it's been fun. But this area really is an anchor point for me. Oh man, it, that's awesome. And I, I talk to so many people because I'm from Texas. To, uh, Chattanooga area by choice. This is my third time back. It's mm -hmm. like I'm at. I feel like it's like I'm, I'm a, a child of divorce. It's like Texas and and Tennessee and they're like oh do I want to be with mom? Do I want to be with dad? Uh, <laughs> kind of back I and forth. I understand. I love them both, but no. But this area, so many people that are from here, 
Um, because, you know, this is a major destination area. Mm -hmm. You know, people from all over the country are relocating here. But the people that are, I talked to a lot of people that are from here, and they go away for a while and they come back. Yeah. It's like, it, it's, you know, they, you, they, they kind of, it's even more special to them you know, to get away and then be able to come back to some place so special for home. Well, and, and that's a great way to put it. I, I think no matter where you grow up, you, you want to leave. You know, I, I run into people that are from Hawaii and it's like, I can't yeah. wait to get off the island. I'm like, what? You live in paradise. But they, no matter where you grow up, you want to leave. And, and that th is adventure, area, like you yeah, said. The, you like got to see you, other you, things. You wanna, yeah, experience but, other things. But this area, for, for, for a lot of reasons, um, it is... Is really booming and and um, obviously a lot of it is economic what's going on in the country you can live here in Tennessee you don't have to pay sales tax um, that the, the Chattanooga area the quality of life is 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 wonderful here um, I know a couple years ago was voted the best outdoor city yep. in, Twice in the country in yeah outdoor magazine. Which, which is amazing I mean, you consider yeah. like Boulder Colorado and Salt Lake City Utah and areas in the Northwest and you know, Cleveland, and and I think maybe just the folks that that grew up here don't appreciate it until they've seen what else is out there. Just and, like and, everything um, in life, you just you have to experience more to to be able to have something to compare it yeah. to. Yeah, and it and it's and it's the area really is experiencing sort of a renaissance. Uh, yesterday, for example, I, I I flew into Nashville, and and um, I. I came here to Chattanooga for some meetings I have this week and to spend some time with you this morning. And um, I, I didn't take my normal route. I went towards Knoxville on I-40 and I cut off at Cookville and I went uh, through, through Fall Creek Falls and Pikeville and to Dayton. And I know you've spent some time in that area. And, and, I, and I've been through there when I was a kid, and I didn't really remember it, and it's just spectacular. And oh, it truly is. That's the, the area when we first moved in this area in 88, I shared with you, that's the area we were living in before we moved back over the mountain into the Chattanooga area. And I just, I would go just appreciate it every, just go sit there yeah. on, the, on the ridge and just to take it in, appreciate the beauty and, and the opportunity to get to live in that area. Yeah. And now... It's the same thing here because, like you said, it is a destination area. Lots of folks are moving here, and um, it's. A, I, I love the culture because of the of what we have around us. Because it's a lifestyle. Mm. People move here for lifestyle. There's and, a lot, lot of authenticity here. Yes. And, uh, but be careful if you're choosing to move here, folks, from somewhere else. Um, don't try and change us. Uh, we're good for a reason. So. Oh, uh, I, I, I love I, that you <laughs> said that. I saw a great. Uh, I love that. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I uh, plan on splitting a lot of time between here and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I saw a great T-shirt the other day, and it said uh, the T-shirt said, "Don't New York my South Carolina," and we mean that. <laughs> that's no, not. No, that's no. not something to and, laugh and at. I love that. First yeah. of all, too, I love Myrtle Beach. My daughter <laughs> took her first step when we were visiting Myrtle mm -hmm. Beach. That is like that was that was a special memory. But no, you're right. It's like. And what and it's a lot. What I like about our, I, I know a lot of our city and mm. like business leaders, and some of them are so intentional about you know helping it stay the same mm -hmm. and not just make it about you know grow and make money and because the mm. economic development's tremendously important. But there's a balance there. Yeah, you have to have life keeping, lifestyle keeping as well. Keeping the culture. As well. yeah. Yes, yes. So we're in just a perfect area to be doing that. So. Like how through this adventure, how did the game of you lived on the golf course, family of golf? Mm. But when did you start recognizing you had some some skill? I mean, because like pro, pro, <laughs> mm. you know, so many people, a lot of people don't realize, you know, like what it takes. <laughs> That's a seems like a lot of people are pro. There, no, to be able to get that opportunity. So what what happened to you well. know? What was the key? kind of things that happened to get you there so so uh, from the very beginning i just had a love of golf i loved everything about golf i love being around i love the people uh the the first professional that gave me a lesson was at cleveland country club the late hollis marlowe he was a golf professional there and you know he put a club in my hands and would encourage and encourage me after he retired joe markham was there joe markham is uh, gosh he's almost 90 years old now and and uh, still plays golf every day and and so, so I was fortunate to get a good start on it. Um, and uh, my stepdad, who I played a ton of golf with, um, along with my grandmother and grandfather. Uh, my, my grandfather worked at Bowater up in Calhoun. And mm -hmm. um, 
he was involved in managing the plant there and he'd get off work at five o'clock every afternoon and it took him about 30 minutes to get to the Cleveland Country Club and I, I'd be sitting there waiting for him you know and they had they had two pull carts and we'd go out and and walk nine holes and I had a couple of little cutoff clubs in, in the bag and and so you know I, I just couldn't wait and and I just I loved it nobody really pushed me and uh, it, it just um, was my thing and and uh, I was, uh, as when we moved to South Carolina, I was, was very fortunate to get involved in some great junior golf programs there. There was a professional where we lived by the name of Barry Deese who had a wonderful junior golf program. Oh, wow. And, and uh, I found that I was competitive and very early on was winning you know, a lot of tournaments. I was a big kid. I thought it was because I was just bigger than everybody else. That helped. But I also found that you know I, I was there an hour after the sun went down, putting and chipping and practicing and I'd, I'd work in the um, in the golf operation there. I, I would get paid a dollar an hour uh, to to wash carts and clean clubs and all of that. And <laughs> I, anybody who came along on the putting green and wanted to putt me, I'd putt them for a quarter a hole, and nobody <laughs> ever beat me. But I, I was a kid I who that. hung out at the golf course all day long, and oh, I would wow. have. Um, you could tell by looking at my shirt what I'd eaten that day, which most day was uh, grape soda. I'd always have a grape stain here. And then uh, Choco Lunch, Lance Choco Lunch crackers. And then our pro shop had um, um, a hot dog machine, you know, where the buns would steam on the top and it would, the, the, the wieners would go around clickety-clack, you know, and I, and I would have those. And there was a little crock of chili that would sit there for a month, but, you know, you'd put it on a hot dog. That's why chili over here. But I, but I was that kid. And, and but, but uh, we had an amazing junior golf program. And he, he brought in, Barry Deese did, um, he brought in um, – Bruce Litsky, uh, who's passed now, who was a, a very well thought of PGA Tour player, probably won six, eight, ten times, and not not a Hall of Fame player, didn't win a major championship, but had a great career, and um, uh, he brought in Bruce Litsky to do a, um, a clinic uh, for the club and spend some time with the juniors, and and he put me at the dinner afterwards, sitting right next to Bruce Litsky, and Bruce Litsky uh, from Oklahoma. Uh, was just so nice to me. I was probably eight, nine years old and, and um, you know, encouraged me. And then years later, as a rookie on the PGA Tour, I was playing the L.A. Open, Riviera Country Club. I mean, it's Hollywood. I mean, I was intimidated. And I got on a shuttle bus to go to the golf course from a hotel, and I sat down next to Bruce Litsky, and, and I told him, I said, um, you know, I'm a rookie, introduced myself, and, and I said, you will not remember this, but I was nine years old, you came to South Carolina, you did a clinic for this guy, and he goes, you're right, I don't remember it. I said, but you encouraged me, and now here I am, a rookie on the PGA Tour, and all those years back, I appreciate your kind words. So, wow. you know, it just I was just always fortunate to be around the right people uh, and, and get hooked and, and loved it, and I, my, my mom and dad didn't push me, they gave me the tools that I needed, and, and they knew if I was going to succeed, it was going to be because I wanted to do it. And I was willing to put the work in, uh, in sports. And any parents that have young kids you think are going to be a, an athlete at a professional level, don't push them. they got to figure out how to get there on their own. If you push them, not only are they not going to make it, but you're going to have problems when, with your relationship with your kids. I promise you that. If they're going to make it, they're going to make it because they want to do it. And that's really important yeah. to remember. Yeah, if they're doing it to try to please their parents or please mm. someone else, it, 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 there's going to be a breaking point. It's not good. At, at some point. They're, mm. it, they are, they're, even if they do have some success, it won't be healthy and so won't lead to the greater good. And, and that, Charlie, I, I mean, I really love your story because it is, you know, what a healthy culture to, you know, to be raised in. And that's a lot. Um, I hosted an Outside with Cindy show um, on Saturday morning radio for a long time. That's what I love to do is encourage people to mm. find – and outdoor activity is why, and mm. I use golf as an example, you know, quite often. Um, but it, it's just so healthy to find outdoor activity, but then a, you know, a bonding experience. Uh, there, I often uh, Dr. Pop uh, here locally, uh, they're a kayaking family, yeah. you know, but they and they all kayak together. And then for me personally, golf is special because I was a single mom, split family, a, a boy and a girl. Well, you know, me and my daughter. You know, we could chat it up, and th mm -hmm. that, but it was a little different with my son. And what I was so thankful that I knew how to play golf, and that you know they got involved in golf because about uh, you know my son's pretty quiet. Four or five holes in, you know, he starts talking, Loosen and we up a would get bit. like even if we only played 
nine holes. You know, we had some great conversation mm -hmm. time because it was, you know, more, you know, finding something in common to talk about and being around him long enough, you know, to let, his, you know, in that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was around him all the time, but being around him long a time and, and yeah. an activity being quiet helped him just open up. And now we, I give golf a lot the credit that, you know, it, we have such a great connection now with uh, being so comfortable to, to talk to each other at deeper levels. Well, it, you, you're right about golf and it's time spent together and you have this common frustration that you're dealing with. I mean, golf mm -hmm. is frustrating, there's no doubt about that. But <laughs> one of the cool things that happens with golf are these amazing mentorship opportunities. Um, along about the time I was 13 or 14, we, we had a, a new uh, PGA head professional Get the, get the job where I grew up. His name is Dean Alexander. He's a master PGA professional. There's only about, in the history of the PGA, there's only about 350 or 400 of those guys. And um, to this day, we're still great friends. In fact, coming in here to talk to you today, I was texting with him. We talked a couple times a week, but he really took me under his wing. And uh, I was 13 or 14 years old. He came in and and I uh, just, you know, he's one of those guys who looks like a golf pro. And, you know, I'm like, I want to be like him. And he gave a clinic to the members at our club and, and just, you know, his command presence, the way he dealt with people. Um, and, I, and I went to him and, and, and I said, I want, I want to play the PGA Tour and will you help me? And he looked at me like I was crazy and he saw me hit a few balls. He goes, yeah, we'll spend some time together. And uh, so when, when I was 17, I won the National Junior Championship under his – his uh, the USGA junior and I was either one or two in the in the country and every day I spent time with him but it, it was more than just like um, uh, they call them golf coaches now I still call them golf teachers because uh, the 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 PJ professionals that work with young people they're, they're more than they're more than just um, a golf coach uh, he, he's the guy that you know would would teach me to speak properly would would teach me um, you know, what clothes to wear, how to conduct myself. Um, he's he's uh, one that if you're walking across a golf course and there was a little wrapper, you know, blowing across in the wind, you get down, you pick up that wrapper. Those, those you know, little things little that things. are so important yeah. that are like building your, you don't realize as a kid that that's building your character. Ex exactly. Early on like that. And, you know, you learn that from your parents, but, my, you know, my parents were working. I was spending more time with my my. Uh, golf teacher than than I was with you know with my parents and there wasn't a financial relationship involved and you know, I would help you know pick up the range and do things around there in exchange for that he would spend time and play golf with me but that, that's an invaluable relationship that's a lifelong relationship uh -huh. and and that's that's the thing that golf does it creates these lifelong relationships that you you get a lot more um, out of golf than you put into it and I think that's why a lot of us are very passionate about junior golf and introducing the game to, to uh, uh, some folks that might not get a chance to play otherwise because we see what good it's done in our lives and we want to pay that forward. Exactly, yes. I served uh, on the board of the first tee mm -hmm. for a while. And I love that. It, it, again, it's a lot what I love about golf is it's still a, you know, there's etiquette required. Mm. <laughs> you know, and uh, I love what it teaches uh, young folks early on because if you're, if you're learning that etiquette through a Sport, it just kind of naturally, you know, roll, goes over into your own life, learning that overall. But just like you said, it's it's a social mm. kind of activity. I think it's a forever sport. Like it I is. learned when I didn't, I, I think I learned when I was like 20-ish. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, oh, goodness, that's great. I'll get to play. I can't hang glide anymore. <laughs> I'm a hang glider <laughs> pilot. I mean, I could, but I don't, I, not much longer anyway. But yeah, I can like I can go play golf forever, and yep. uh, I, I and I do love it for young folks. And I love what you said about golf teachers, because I know some of them from working through the first tee and some other. And there's there is a special thing there. It, it just uh, uh, for like you said for children who don't have that opportunity at home or whatever to get that kind of attention into developing something in you is just so valuable. Mm. Uh, which, you know, that makes me think, two, two things I'm thinking about with you that I want to talk more about you with is faith and perspective. Mm -hmm. Hey y'all, I'm Clayton Q, and I'm right here at Cindy's Choice. I would love for you to support the small businesses on cindyschoice.com. By doing that, you're allowing Cindy's Choice to give back to the community. 
it's important that we support those small businesses so that we can keep giving love to the community and receiving that love back. I'm Clayton Q coming to you from Cindy's Choice. So Charlie, so I know you're a man of faith and I am like, um, for, for me myself, I didn't become a Christian till later in life and it just, it amazes me like how, you know, how did I, <laughs> how did I manage until then, because uh, it, it, to know that, like, you know, that God was there the whole time, and I could have, like, uh, you know, had the empowerment and the confidence uh, that I have now, and I always had that heart to help, always. Mm. But I remember when I first got saved, uh, you know how you hear something, like, three times within a short amount of time, and you just know you need to pay attention? And I re remember, you know, folks were sure to tell me they're, I was a brand new Christian, they're like, Cindy... You have such a heart to give, but you're not going to be a good giver until you're a good receiver. And I'm like, I what are they talking about? Uh, see, I'm like, yeah, you want to give? I'll receive. What do you? You know, <laughs> I, I had no idea. But because in my I had a different childhood, and that it was a, 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 I don't know who my my biological father was. And uh, God bless my mama, very sick lady, sociopathic. Um, I was out on my own at an early age because I was exploited and abused and so forth like that. And what I'm picking up on and what I love about this, you know, I didn't have a healthy upbringing at all. You had a healthy upbringing. But what I we have so much in common. Hmm. And that's why, why, why I was listening. I thought he has such a great perspective. And adventure. Like, I love that you were like, you know, we have to embrace adventure. And um, it, it's, so I, I love that you ha have that perspective. So where did, were you, I mean, were you brought up in the church with with a relationship with Christ or just share a little bit about um, you, you, that relationship. Well, first off, I appreciate you being so open about your your story. I mean, it's very, very courageous, also very inspiring. Mm -hmm. and, and I know as you've gone down this path, probably the response that you've got from your viewers has been overwhelming. So what you're doing by sharing is, is making a big difference oh, thank in you, people's lives. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, and, it, and I'm sure uh, it's probably easier for you now, but when you first started, I'm, well, I bet it was uh, it's, pretty I'm, difficult. I'm eager to share because I want to help people, but I don't. The reason yeah. I have Cindy's Choice is to promote and help others. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't ever want to make it about me, but I'm understanding more than ever. It's like it's a responsibility. If you've overcome and you can share and help with others, you got to get it out there. Yeah, sure. So, so thank you, though. You folks like you make it that much uh, easier. <laughs> well, well I, I, and I appreciate the question. I, I've never really talked about my faith, especially with TV cameras rolling. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, in my 25 years of broadcasting, um, I, I always felt that I, you know if I went down that road, I'd probably been shown the door right after the show. Uh, but but at the same time, it's not my job as a golf analyst to, to share my faith. And right. And most no, of, I agree. Yeah, but but in this format, I, I'm really happy I'm to do that. I'm the same way because yeah. I'm on secular radio. If it's relevant, I'll talk it up. But I'm, yeah. I don't think it's, yeah, that's not what that platform's for. But, but I think that, um, um, you know, folks from my comments and the angle I come at a lot of things probably realize that I do have faith without me openly talking about it. And, and that's been intentional. That's been my goal. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't grow up in the church. You know, every now and then I get drugged to church, and I, you know, I'd sit there and color. And <laughs> and, uh, um, and w w one of the things you mentioned about, um, I'm gonna paraphrase what you said. Realizing that God's always been there. Uh, it took my wife Carol uh, watching how she operates and and her faith and how strong she is to sort mm. of help me get to that realization that you know God has always been there. And and. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I look back and I can see it was like a, you know, connect the dots sort of puzzle. It's like, wow, I've been on this path. A lot of times I've been too dumb to realize it, but he, he's always been there. Yeah. And, and, um, so, uh, we, we started attending, uh, we're, we're, um, uh, United Methodists and we started attending church and I started making some relationships with some folks in the church and some pastors and, and, um, as I dug into it a, a little bit more, you know, I came to a lot of realizations. And, and uh, uh, I was baptized as a child. I, I don't want to get into all the mm. believer's baptism. And, uh, you know, we, uh, I believe in, in um, the teachings of the United Methodist Church to, to an extent. And, and, but I don't, I'm not afraid to question some things as well. Um, and and um, I, I think it's up to 
uh, all of us to figure a lot of things out on our own. And I, yes. I think, you know, people get along sometimes, governments and churches don't get along, and we get drug into that. And I try to try to stay above that and, and keep some good perspective on it. But um, it, it just, you know... The, the overwhelming realization that you know all this just doesn't happen by accident you know exactly. and, and you know you start doing some reading and you know big picture uh, what you know what it means to be Christian you know if you, if you look at the macro the way you know the solar system is and the earth and the way everything works that is just not random you know we're, we're like where our planet is like there's just statistically it's there's no way it can happen. Yeah. yeah it's like and then and then my wife at nurse being a nurse you know on her background you look like at the cellular level like all the systems that are there and being able to see and hear and think and all that you know it's just not an accident so childbirth for goodness that's what really my I, that my first that's what was a major yeah. wake up call this is like amazing like right, it's right so so you know you sort of dig into that and you're like okay so this isn't my accident all right so you know how do, how do we get here so you sort start digging a little bit and there's there's uh uh and 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 the united methodist church you know there's it's it's a method you know from john wesley and there's a sort of a formula that we follow and most church services um will have at one point in there the Apostles' Creed. And, and you know, paraphrase the Apostles' Creed, that, that sort of summarizes my faith. I believe in the Creator God Almighty. Uh, I, I believe he, he, he walked with us. I believe He suffered. I believe He died. I believe He rose from the dead. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the communion of saints. And, and you know, so, so every time we recite that Apostles' Creed, I go, if someone ever asked me with TV cameras rolling what I believe, I believe in what's covered in the Apostles' Creed, yeah. and and um, you know, and and my evidence is you know looking around in life, and you know, so many things in the Bible, you know, you, uh, I guess there's phrase like, phrases like um, you know, guys on the road to Emmaus, you yeah. know, and, and Jesus came and walked with them, and 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 uh, you know, the, the scales were removed after he left. There's so many things in life that. Are revealed to you when it's supposed it's, to be revealed exactly, to you. Exactly, and that's what, yeah. like, a lot of folks don't understand. It's not a book to be read. I, I don't want to say not literally, but there, there's just so, so many layers there. Yeah. That if you if if you don't approach it kind of spiritually to some degree, you're you're it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and that's for but there's you know, that's so for, much. Yeah. Like I love that. I haven't ever liked the now. I'll read that completely yeah. differently from what you just shared because it's just amazing. Uh, and again, I didn't, um, I was not having a good foundation in life. And, you know, that, that didn't, you, know, you, you kind of tend to have cycles after that that just keep getting worse because you don't have a direction to go. Hmm. And it's very confusing because you see what everybody else is doing and you're trying to emulate that. And so for me, it was just a getting that example of Jesus and that finally having an example to follow and a place to go. So I didn't, you know, every time I ran from a bad situation, I wasn't just running to another bad situation. I, it gave me, you know, a direction. Yeah. And and that was so amazing. And um, and I'm very excited about a direction because um, you also, I was saving this because I, I listed this big list of everything that Charlie's involved with. But you are a big a supporter of Challenge Golf Association, mm -hmm. which that's a Cindy's Choice nonprofit partner that is so dear to my heart because um, I outreach, of course, because I didn't become a Christian till late in life. Outreach is very, very uh, special to me because sure. I understand um, how scary it is for folks that aren't familiar uh, with being around. With, you know, for me personally, um, I had this, you know, that. There was something there that was, you know, I was getting called, yet at the same time, it was terrifying. I go, because I carried all this shame and all this guilt, and you feel ignorant because you don't know about the Bible and stuff. And I was, I didn't want to go hang around with Christians. I didn't feel like I was good enough hmm. to hang around with. And I didn't realize that in the time, because I was just confused about the whole thing. So comfortable outreach hmm. has always been, and, you know, very, and that's a lot what Cindy's Choice is. Like you, it's what, if we're not waving a Christian flag or preaching or anything. It's just what we're demonstrating. We're leading with love. They're, the logo is a sword and a shield, but the shield is heart-shaped. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we got to stand our ground. We've got to be strong. You know, it, it's uh, we got to know how to stare down the wolves, but at the same time, we got to lead with love. And um, I think that's more than ever. And I think that's what you do. It's like you said, you can just see it in you. Um, you don't have, you know, it's, it's not necessary 
to go talk about it or um, it's, it's necessary to love people first and then when they're ready or if they want to know more then we can share with them because they trust us then and know that we really care. Well, um, a great friend of mine, the Reverend Bill Britt, uh, who's at Peachtree Roads in, in, uh, in Buckhead in Atlanta, he, he one night we were talking and, and we might have been playing golf and <laughs> his, his approach to Christianity was if you look at Christianity as, as uh, a, a, a nice big house on a hill, it needs to have a welcoming front porch and you, you want to get people on the front porch and, and you don't want to shun them, you don't want to keep them away and once they get comfortable on the front porch, you know, if they want to go in and check out some rooms in the house, they, they can do, go do that. But if they just want to hang out on the front porch, that's fine too. Right. And so I, I feel very strongly about that in that, um, you know, sometimes I see some folks proselytizing, you know, at an SEC football game on a milk crate, yelling at kids that are coming out of the, you know, Georgia-Auburn football game. You're all drinking. You're all going to hell. You know, you got to <laughs> repent. Well, those people aren't going to repent. They're looking at that guy like he's an idiot. No, that and, doesn't and set so, the best example. <laughs> yeah, and so the whole example to me of being Christian, um, you know, I don't want to hang out with the Christians. They don't have any fun. Well, I have as much fun as anybody. I'm having more and, fun than ever. <laughs> right, and, I, you know, I think we're, you know, we're supposed to go on this adventure that is life, yes. and we make mistakes, and that's fine. Um, and but you know we ask for forgiveness for those mistakes and and uh, um, the one thing that we do believe is you know that that you know God has us on this path and and we you know most of the time we're too dumb to see it but when we have those moments when we do see it we self correct and and uh, to be judgmental or push people aside <clears throat> push them off of that front porch I think is wrong. Oh, I love and, that analogy. And so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm always. Um, you know, if someone wants to talk to me about my faith, I'm open about that, or, or you know, I'll be honest with them. And and uh, sometimes the answer is I don't know, but I don't want to push people away by being Christian. Um, I you know, know I, that, I think I yeah. think we have to be welcoming. Uh, and and um, that because um, I, I really I, I wanted to be a 5013C at first because there is a, a you know it's kind of a business outreach. I'm, you know, I'm building a healthy, uh, protected network for businesses. I thought, no, it's, it's like, it, it's, I, I, I just want to go and love people mm. <laughs> and I feel the same way. Like, and, and, and welcome everybody to the porch. Yep. And, uh, and that's what I love about Challenge Golf Association and the heart of Ron Potter. Oh my goodness. Mm. He is, uh, um, uh, I, I just, uh, we, we've been in this parallel that we didn't know about and now like it's, it's come together like that. And, uh, I love having them as a nonprofit partner and, uh, the way it, we complement each other. But I also love playing golf. Yeah. And I love what's happening in Cleveland at the Cleveland Country Club come October. And uh, yeah, 10th and 11th, we're going to have a really cool event. And uh, I, I'm um, just just becoming friends with Ron Potter. Uh, I, I knew who he was. Um, we have some, some um, friends and business associates that, that deal with him. They love him to death. And... Mm -hmm. And he approached me and he goes, hey, have you ever wanted to do a charity tournament? I'm like, yeah, I'd love to do a charity tournament. I, I participate. I have a lot of friends that have charity tournaments, and I, and I love doing it. It's amazing. People come together. You find a great cause. And he goes, well, do you want to do something with us? And I said, um, yeah, I'd love to do a charity event at, at Cleveland Country Club yep. where, where I, you know, I made my first birdie playing with my grandmother, Miss Ethel. It meant so much to me. And, and I told and, you my middle name is Ethel. I uh, love that. I love that. <laughs> and I, I said it'd be fun to do. And he said, well, you know, what should the charity be? And I said, you know what? I, I think the big man will help figure that out. I'm not really tied in with what's going on at Cleveland. I said, my, my wife has a passion for mission work and dealing with the homeless. She, she was on staff at, at United First United Methodist Church of Athens, Georgia. And and uh, when she left town, there was a, a fund that the church had there to help homelessness. They named it after her, and, and uh, she has a passion for that. And, I, and I'd always try to help, you know, when I could. And I said, I believe something will be revealed. And he called me a few weeks later. He said, well, how, how about the Caring Place? It's a, uh, an organization that serves Cleveland and Bradley County, uh, hel helping with the homeless. And um, I said, well, you know, what churches are involved? And he said, 22 churches. I said, Bingo! Let's do that because yes. if there's that many churches involved in it and and that many volunteers and that's something I I want to help with oh, across yes. a lot and of denominations. I've already and, had Corinne on the show. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. So the director uh, over there and it's I I love yeah you know, what they're doing and of course 
you know, Ron calls me mm -hmm. and you, cause he knows my story and all this is coming and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, you know, cause you had chosen homelessness and that's already so relevant yeah. to my platform and my story. And, uh, and then I'm also with Challenge Golf Association. They're not just a, a nonprofit partner and that we sponsor them. I am so honored to be invited to start helping to include more women mm -hmm. and at some point uh, start an LCGA, a Ladies Challenge Golf oh, that'd be great. Association. So it, it's just wonderful to be a part of what you're doing on um, October 10th and 11th yeah, yeah. that we're doing that. We're having uh, kind of the, the gala event. Um, I guess that's what you call it. What, what are you calling the... Uh, it's going to be a big party. Yeah, that's what yeah, it is. Like yeah. it's, it's going to be a so, party so, Sunday uh, night. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, I, I've got some friends that are coming to help out. Uh, Dan Tominski, who's an amazing oh. bluegrass artist. I believe Dan's got 14 Grammy Awards. He's played for years and years with Allison Krauss. He's a man of constant sorrow. Yes. He loves golf. He's just a big old teddy bear sweetheart. Aww. And uh, it's not just Dan. It's Dan and his band. And uh, if you love bluegrass, that's going to be great. And then the comedian Henry Cho out of Nashville, who's just a absolute sweetheart a wonderful man and uh, he is so funny yes and, he, is. Uh, he he's gonna uh, come into town and and uh, help out as well he'll make everybody laugh on sunday night and he's gonna play golf on monday he's a good good golfer oh, too wow. and and so uh, we might have a few other folks show up as well and and uh, so it, it's gonna be a lot of fun and that you know that's what sort of golf does is bring people together have a good time we'll do some nice auction items and and have a fun golf tournament there on Monday and, and sort of get everybody together. And we'll, we'll have a lot of fun. There'll be some hooting and hollering. And, and we'll have some folks here probably, you know, hadn't been in church in a while, which is fine too. And, and, and um, uh, just let no, them like see you, what's, to see what's going on. It's yeah, a big exactly. front porch party. Yeah, yeah it's going to no, be a big, not, big yeah. front porch party, no doubt about that. But after it's all said and done, I'll end up helping folks um, – in the Cleveland and Bradley County area that needs some help. So. so excited about that. And um I've I had Corinne on and we went we went over our hour. <laughs> so it's like, all right, Corinne, I gotta have you back. And uh they uh they came like everybody knows them and loves them and what they're mm. doing in that area. And th this is so important because supporting organizations like that is key. And that's why, like, those organizations love my testimony because I did not have that kind of support. Now, that was my journey, my path, and, that you know, I'm very thankful now because I can, like, encourage help for those platforms more than ever mm -hmm. because most people, if they have to do it on their own, aren't going to make it. It is just too difficult because when you don't come from a good environment like I did, you don't really – know how to break free you don't recognize there's anything different that's your normal you think that's just life and you learn to adapt and that's why you know a lot of people get corrupted and become even criminals because they just think it's survival because that's all they know and it's, it's confusing if you want to leave that because there's a gap there you're going to have to go alone and when trouble hits like there's nowhere to go but backwards that's your support system even though it's not good support and so programs like that um allow you uh, give you support through that transition so because it's not just about getting someone someplace to live and getting them in an automobile and getting them a job it's so much more involved and you know uh, i've lived it so i understand it corinne works with people and is educated in that so she understands it but the majority of us don't so that's what i love about these organizations i was like I can demonstrate that there's a lot of people like me, very capable, smart girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did people? How did you end up homeless? Well, when you don't come from a, have a healthy network of support, you get so ill that you can't take care of yourself for a while. Then you are very vulnerable, and it's where kind of Cindy's choice comes from because you end up making a lot of desperate choices. And for me, it was such a blessing because that's what becoming a Christian later in life. That's what kind of taught me to learn the, through those cycles to trust Jesus, to trust God more than the, the people I had access to for help. And now, oh my goodness, I'm through that and I can be good, healthy help to others. But more than ever, I understand how much folks need support through that transition because it's not an easy fix. They've been conditioned 
in a way to not even understand that, you know, there's really, there really are good people out there that want to support and help them and understanding, you know, a healthy love type so thing. you got to a point where someone needed to believe in you, yeah. and that's what you got. And, and oh, I love so that. So that's, that's what you're doing now is, is you're, you're hel helping folks by believing in them and giving them an opportunity. Oh, yeah. And that, and, oh, my goodness. That's so good, Charlie, mm -hmm. because it is. That is what it's about. And um, it, it, that, that I talk about, I've always had confidence, but when that empowerment, when, you know, you're, you're, you know you're on the right path, you know, when you're just so confident in your path, there's an empowerment that comes that it, it just, um, I, I'm so concerned now for folks that are out there on their own that don't have that. And so I love supporting folks like Corinne, and uh, that's a lot of what my platform is about, is uh, supporting uh, those types of platforms. And then helping folks understand, don't try to understand, just trust us, mm. <laughs> because it's hard. If you haven't walked it, if you don't work around it all the time, it's easy, you know, to think that, oh, you know, they chose drugs or they chose this or nobody chooses that. It, it, it's, you know, nor normally even like drug addictions and uh, chemical addictions and so forth come from a lack of connection. You know, try, and I'm just so thankful that through what, what I went through, I didn't go that direction to try to numb the pain because I understand why they, you know, people want to do that. It's, it's just hard to endure and deal with what they have to deal with on a regular basis. So uh, supporting organizations like that is just wonderful, which brings me right back around to your wife, Carol. Mm -hmm. So just briefly, I mean, I mean it, like that, her heart for helping the homeless, and she's a nurse, so that, you know, that tells me a lot about her heart. Um, so like what is, that's just so, I mean, it's just so perfect <laughs> <laughs> that y'all want to do that in our area. And that's what I want to do. And I want to help amplify that and, and help there too. Where, where did that come about from her? Well, I mean, not to um, speak for her. I know, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But it felt no. like a vague kind of. Well, I don't understand mother-in-law jokes because <laughs> my late mother-in-law was the nicest person I ever met in my life. People say, oh, I get mother-in-law out of the house. I'm like, what are you talking about? I loved it when my mother-in-law uh, would, would come visit. She was just the sweetest, kindest Aww. lady. And, and so uh, Carol's a baby of five, and, and uh, uh, she, she saw a lot of the grace that, that her mom displayed throughout her life. And um, Ca Carol, um, I, I think one of the reasons we've been together very happily for, well, at least on my side, you know, you have to check with her, but for th 30 years, in, in a lot of ways, we have a different perspective and we have different strengths and weaknesses I do most of the talking, which is fine because she's a listener. You know, if you have two Perfect. talkers or two listeners, that that doesn't work. But um, I, I knew from age five, you know, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, and in in in, uh, in life, it took her a while to figure out. Um, I can she, relate to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is you know per perfectly you know perfectly fine. That's just the way it is for some people. But um, she she uh, when I was early on in my professional career. She, she was getting her master's in public health from Emory University. And, and um, then when I made it to the PGA Tour, we started having babies. She sort of put her, her career on hold and, and was a mom for a while. Now, we were having a lot of fun and traveling yeah. and, and all of that. But then uh, when, when I lost my game and, and I had, had to go a different direction, then it was you know, time for her to, to buckle down and, and, and focus back on her career. And I was very happy to, to, to support that every way I could. But when, when our kids got middle school and started in high school, she decided that she was going to go at, at age 40 plus back to school and get her RN. Oh, and wow. uh, so she set up her schedule to go to a community college in Orlando, right down the street from the high school my boys went to. And while they were at school uh, working on high school, she was in a community college there working on her RN and and uh, so she showed them you know that that you got to study to accomplish things and and uh, so uh, she ended up getting her RN she ended up getting another degree after that as well so uh, she went into uh, mid 40s went into into practice at Florida Hospital in the big hospital working the night shift and and um, uh, first few years of being an RN that's just what you have to do and, and um, as the boys transitioned off to college, she transitioned into, into a career as an RN and an MPH. And, and she got into hospice for a, for a while. And she probably, I, I, 
I think she'll probably get back into hospice at some point. I, I think the hospice nurses, what they do are unbelievable, you know, yes. and, and you, you got to do it for a little That's while. That's coming then, on my radar a lot because there's, you know, there's, um, every, everybody keeps telling me they're trying to connect me with this hospice for, for folks that are homeless. I'm like, oh my goodness, you don't yeah, even think about that's a tough one. such things. I mean, hospice is hard enough to think about than you think about it, you know, for folks that are homeless. Yeah. No, no, I love that. I cannot wait to meet her. I'm very excited <laughs> about that. And I have to say, I love how, like, you know, I, I never even thought about, well, he's a golf pro. He's, you know, this, you, you know, it's, it's obvious why you, you, your authentic personality is what I saw. And I thought, oh, no wonder he's, you know, got all these roles as spokesperson in uh, media and so forth like that, because you've just that authentic, um, you know, people like real and uh, you're, you're entertaining. Mm. Uh, but I love that, like, you know, when you lost your game and we've only got like a minute or so, but so, I mean, to me, that's a whole nother show to dig into what it takes to be a pro. And like, I used to get to go to the uh, Shell Open every year mm. and, and get I almost won that one year. That's the closest I came to winning Oh my tour. goodness. And I mean, yeah. to stand there and watch those amazingly talented golfers miss a short putt or something, you're just like, whoa, this is, you know, it makes you feel better about you. <laughs> this mm. is a hard game. And I, I really miss that opportunity, but in one minute, like it's a you know what what happens like how do you know you've lost your game it just well in my case it was pretty easy to look at my bank account and figure <laughs> that this isn't working out um that you mentioned the shell houston open and the history of the pga tour it's the only time it ever happened i made a three and a half footer on the 72nd hole to finish third place by myself behind Payne stewart and scott hoke and carol jumped the ropes, ran out on the greens, and leapt into my arms for a third-place finish. So oh my goodness. <laughs> that was really funny. But, no, it was just uh, – I, I just wasn't happy. And I, um, it was time to move on to something else. And I don't have any bitterness about uh, losing no, my game because it, no, it's, that, uh, that got me ready for what I do now. I mean, how blessed so, are you to have been there in the first place? Well, I mean, that's – It seems like a whole other lifetime ago. Oh, but, wow. But I enjoyed my experiences there. But I, I really enjoy what I'm doing now. Oh, so, so I love um, what you're doing now. And yeah. I love what I get to help you do <laughs> in mm. October. And, and, and we love you. And thank you for tuning in today for this is the Cindy's Choice in Charge show. And thank you, Charlie, for demonstrating, you know, you're, you're in charge of your adventure with great results. And we look forward, hopefully, we, I'd, I'd love to have you back another time to dig more into the, the whole golf thing. Sure. You're, All it takes is a biscuit. If you, get, if you have yeah. a biscuit, I'll show up. Yeah, because it's such, it is, it's such a popular, <laughs> popular sport. And, and I am trying to encourage more women and I tell them, it, they say, oh, it's too hard. I go, it's not that hard and it's social. It's really, <laughs> you'll love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks again, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Cindy back here with you and John Schneider. Oh my gosh, the first bows on the road. So excited to have been able to- Look I've at all these boats. Isn't this great, Cindy? Is it wonderful? Isn't it's, it wonderful? No, John, it's really wonderful. I gotta tell you, this has been so amazing. Little children, families, people, they're coming up to me and telling me how much they appreciate ah. that y'all are here. They're, I've never, they're like, I never met a celebrity before. That's so cool that they came here. It really is cool that you come here and this, this community has received it. They love you and what an awesome community, isn't it? Oh, it's a great community and they, they showed up, uh, so many people showed up at the bird song on Friday for the VIP night. Then Saturday, for all of the wonderful festivities, the music was great. The food, the, the uh, mechanical bull was great. Local crafts, right? So local craftsmen were there. So it was really a great way, as I had said before, for the community to fall back in love with its hometown. Yeah. And then last night at the, uh, at the Camden Speedway, there were people everywhere. They sold out of water before intermission. So it was, it was pretty great. Oh, it was pretty great, y'all. This guy raced. He was like behind well, the wheel. Kind of, I just kind of was feeling the car out, trying to see what it could or what I could and couldn't do. Uh, but I'll catch up. You know, it's a that's a you want to creep into that. Yes. Right. So I'm creeping into it. We're going to race again in two weeks, uh, and I'll go a little faster, and then a little faster. And I'm by about the fourth race, then I'll be in it. I'll be I'll be wow. in the mess, and in grave danger. No. I'll be, uh, I'll be in the mess and I'll be having a great, great time. But it was so much fun. Uh, Jerry over there was terrific. John York at the Birdsong Drive-In is fantastic. And uh, Birdsong Bob, 
Exactly. Bob and Judy Bird here Bob at the Judy. RV Bird Resort. Bob, Bob and Judy. What do you say? It was uh, Marina Bob, Marina Bob and Judy. They're fantastic. So if you missed it this year, don't worry about it. We're coming back next year. Uh, I've, I was just told we have 100 boats, which is fantastic. And some boats are great party boats like this, and some boats are like super fast cigarette I, boats like I'm that. I'm in one of those, John. I'm of in a cigar boat. You are. <laughs> of course you are. But look right there. Cindy's choice is to celebrate and collaborate our community. Yeah. And that's I even why... Did, I even did the thing. Yeah, oh God. And that's why I love it, because that's what Bose is about. Let's celebrate and let's collaborate our communities. Yes. And I love the mission these are, guys are on. And so go, you know, just John Schneider, Google it. And Check it out. I'm Bose telling you. Bose Extravaganza on the road. Or just look me up, johnschneiderstudios.com. And uh, you, but you'll have a link. We'll have a link to you. You'll have a link to us. But the most important thing is appreciate and love where you are. Get to know your community, your butcher, your baker, your candlestick maker. Uh, shop local, live local, uh, and it'll be a better place. Hey, love local. Love local, absolutely. <laughs> shop local, live local. It's hard to say. Shop local, live local, love local. And the world, especially local, will be a better, oh, the world will be a better place one local at a time. I love that. That's a t-shirt. All right, I'm going to push her in the water now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Great having you out there. Oh, you too. All weekend. It was so great. Thank you. My pleasure. Cindy's Choice is integrity-centric businesses that care about the community and they want to contribute through collaboration. Rick Worley and Son is an awesome example of a Cindy's Choice. That's because it's the people behind the product that starts with Rick. Rick is the president and the owner of Rick Worley and Son, Inc. We do collision. You wreck your vehicle, you bring it to us, we repair it, put it back to pre-crash condition. I was... 22 when I started, you know, really young, but I had been around the industry since I was born. I've been in business for 25 years. We try to be the best. A lot of customers depend on their vehicle. We're working on their investment, making sure their investment's back the way it was when they first purchased it. You have to be good to your customers. You want your techs to have certifications. You want them to, to be trained in process and procedure of repairing the vehicles. And I have a program where a company comes in, trains my guys, they get certified, so they have backup for their skills. We try to get it in, get it out. We don't need grass to go around your car, <laughs> you know? So if there's a car crash and collision repair is needed, Rick Worley and Son is the place to go. They are Cindy's choice. They're integrity centric and they really do care. And be sure to go to cindyschoice.com and check out the other reputable businesses at Cindy's Choice. I really want to share with our viewers, our listeners, um, what an impact you made in my life right off the bat. Um, when we first met, I had gone to a, a chamber council meeting to see you speak, and I made a quick introduction just to invite you on my show. That was, uh, that was all that was on my agenda. But as conversation progressed and something relevant got brought up, I shared my homeless experience with you. And I'll never forget how we were standing kind of in the position that we're sitting right now and your body language completely changed. You turned around, I don't know if you remember this, but you turned around, got eye to eye directly in front of me, you know, toe to toe, and you spoke such encouragement in me and you acknowledged my courage. And I, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I get out there and, and do what it takes. I, I didn't even recognize that I, I needed that, but more so, quickly impressed upon me. That's what, you know, he gets it. He gets what 80% of the people are out there dealing with on a daily basis. He gets like the courage it takes to deal with just so many everyday issues that um, some people just uh, aren't aware of. And, and so it, it quickly, my confidence just went off the charts. And then I was just that much more eager to, uh, 
to get you on the show and be more involved because I'm like I you know I I can make a difference too. So I just uh, I wanted to share that. Well, I, I think we should just end now. I think. That's yes, I know. So thank you um, for joining us. <laughs>